Welcome again for another visual how-to. My name is Patrick Tissigem. I'm a managing partner for a company called U2U based in Brussels. And in this session here, I'm going to talk about how to build custom workflow activities for the information workers that are building workflows using the SharePoint Designer 2007. Before I dive into the details of creating a custom activity using Visual Studio.net, let's have a look first at the scenario that a power user can follow to build a workflow template using the SharePoint Designer and associated here to the issues list that I have in this collaboration site. So what we will do is we will verify if a certain keyword is available within the title of the issue. And if that keyword is there, then we're going to create a task item in the tasks list that is available on this site. Later on, I'm going to show you how to create a custom activity that will pretty much do the same thing, but allow the task to be created in a tasks list in another site, maybe even in another site collection or on another machine. Creating a workflow in the Microsoft Office SharePoint Designer is pretty straightforward. The thing you do after starting the product is you navigate to the site you want to target with your workflow, and then you open up the workflow designer. So here, in the first pane, you give the name of your workflow. You select the SharePoint list to which the workflow needs to be attached. And then you can also set the start options for the workflow. When I click the Next button, I end up in the screen where I can create the different steps that make up the workflow. I'm only going to go for one step. And for a step, you can have a number of conditions and actions that are associated with it. For this example, I'm going to go for the condition title field contains keywords. So if the title of our issue contains the keyword important, then we're going to create an item in the tasks list. So in order to achieve this, I need to go for an action. And here are the different activities that I as an information worker in the SharePoint designer can use. And I can go for the creation of my task item either via the assign it to do item or via the create list item. Now this activity here requires me to provide a number of values for the parameters. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select the tasks list and you're restricted here to only the lists that are part of the site itself. I'm going to set the value for the required title field. So I'll set this value to a dummy task. And next, I'm going to also assign a value to the assigned to field. And I'm going to select Mike Fitzmaurice here in the list of users. This is the only thing we are going to do for this workflow. So I'm going to just hit the Finish button. And the SharePoint designer will generate all the files for me, deploy my workflow to my SharePoint site, and activate it for my list instance. So let's go back to the collaboration site and the how-to issues list that is part of the site. And let's verify in the list settings workflow settings that the issues workflow generated by the SharePoint designer is there as a possible workflow template. So now we go back, create a new item, and let's test out the workflow by creating an item that has the keyword important in the title of the field. So this is an important issue. We'll kick off the activity that will create a task item. Now the workflow was designed to be started manually, so let's do this. Let's kick off the workflow, issues workflow, let's start it. And as you see, you have a, an additional column that shows the status of the workflow. It has been completed. And in the tasks list, we have a dummy task item assigned to Mike Fitzmaurice. Now, this was quite easy, but unfortunately, there is a restriction. We can only create task items in the list where the workflow was started. And maybe as an information worker, what you want to do is you want to create task items in lists that are available on other sites, in other site collections, maybe on other machines. And that is where the developer comes in. He or she can create custom activities, deploy them in such a way that the SharePoint designer can pick them up 
and make them available to the workflow designer. And what I'm going to show you now is a custom activity that will allow the workflow designer to create a task item in a list on another site. Developers can use the Visual Studio.NET extensions for Windows Workflow Foundation to create custom activities. Here in Visual Studio, we can start a new project and we can select here the workflow project type and in it we can go for project templates that allow us to build complete workflows but that is part of other visual how-tos that will be available in the future. For now, let's use this one here called the workflow activity library. Now to get us started, I already have created a project called custom workflow activities and we have one activity in here called the create task in list on site activity. You can create additional activities by going here for add new item and then you will see that over here in the project items you have activity as a possible item template. We can work on the activity in the designer and for example create a composite activity but that's not the goal of the example here. I'm going to just browse through the code that I have written here for our activity. And the first thing that I have done is I have added a reference to the Microsoft.SharePoint.dll since we're going to communicate with the object model. And next we have a class that inherits from the sequence activity base class. And that is part of the item template. The activity class has two major sections. The first one is the declaration of the properties. And normally for properties, what you have is a getter and a setter in combination with a private field that stores the value. For activities, your private fields are replaced with variables of type dependency property. These are necessary since you want that the workflow engine is able to communicate with these values via getters and setters at runtime. And also, the designers, like the SharePoint designer, need to be able to pick them up and display them to the user in a certain way. So you register each of your fields as type dependency property, one by one, and you specify kind of what type they are representing. And then you have the getters and setters. So for each of them, you are going to specify via some attributes for example, what the category is going to be that is going to be displayed in the SharePoint designer. I'm going here for cross-site actions. And then we have the body of the get and the set communicating with our dependency property, getting the values and setting the values of these properties. And then the second block is the block where you are going to override the execute method of your parent. And it's here that you will write the bulk of your code. So in this piece of code, I just grab a new instance of SP site. So with the information that the user provided in the SharePoint designer. And using all of that information, I'm going to go and connect to the list and create a task item in that list. And if there is an exception, I'm going to simply write something in the event log. When the activity has done with the execution of its code, it can return a status to the workflow. And in this case, we're going to specify that for us, for this activity, everything was going OK, even if there is an exception that was raised. And that's all of the code you have to write. For the rest, you need to sign your assembly, and you have to drop the assembly in the global assembly cache. Dropping the assembly in the global assembly cache, however, is not going to be enough for the SharePoint designer to pick it up. So what you need to do is you need to go and navigate in Windows Explorer to your 12.5. There you will find a directory called template, and this is all language dependent, so you need to go for your locale ID, in this case 1033, and you will find there a subfolder called workflow. In it, you have by default 
a file called wss.actions. And that is the file that contains all of the activities and conditions that you saw me using in the first part of the uh, demonstration. What you can do now for your own custom activity is you can create your own actions file. And I have called the actions file here msdn.actions. Let's have a look at the internals of the msdn.actions. I really advise you to also open up wss.actions and take a look, study the different elements that are used in wss.actions to expose the different activities that you saw me using in the SharePoint Designer in the first part of the demonstration. I have an action here called create task in list on site. And then we have the code behind information that is necessary pointing to our .NET assembly. We have a category. And then you have an element called rule designer. This element has an attribute called sentence. This is what the SharePoint designer displays in the workflow designer when people select the activity from the list of activities. And you will see here numbers that are prefixed by a percentage. These are representing the different fields that need to be populated. And you need to provide more information about these fields the name of the field, and then very important, the designer type. So this is what SharePoint Designer is going to display when you are going for the population of that specific field. For example, when you populate the Assign To field, you're going to get a dialog in the SharePoint Designer filled up with the list of users and groups from which you can select. All of these fields need to be mapped to parameters exposed by our custom activity class, and these are the dependency properties I talked about previously. So we have the different parameters, each connecting to one of these properties, and their type and their, their direction. So that's what you need to specify for the actions file. Now there's one more thing that you need to do before you can test out your custom activity, and that is you have to register your custom activity library as one of the authorized types in the web.config that is part of the directory of your IS web application. When you open up the web.config in your Visual Studio, you will find at the bottom a section called authorized types, and you just copy the last one that is in that list and then specify the details for your own custom activity library, the strong name together with the namespace containing the different classes that represent the activities. It's pretty much like the safe control entry you have to do for the web part that you want to enable on the SharePoint sites. An IIS reset is going to be required, but when you have done that, what you uh, can do now is test it out. So I'm going back here to my how to issues list. And what I'm going to do now is use the SharePoint designer again, but now tell it to create a workflow that will create a task item, not in the tasks list of the site, but in the tasks list of a subsite that I have. Returning back to the SharePoint Designer, we can create a new workflow using the workflow designer. Let's give a name, issues workflow two. And we are going for the same list. Clicking next brings us here where we can set a condition, pretty much the same condition as before, but now checking on the keyword not important, and we're going for an action. Now normally you will not find your custom activity directly here in this list, but you will have to go via more actions. You will see all of the actions categorized here, and you can select your category, see your activity, and then just add it to the designer. The designer next is going to display the sentence that you have defined in the msdn.actions file. And now you can just click here and populate all of the different fields. So first task titled, another dummy task. And then we have the this user, and we pop up the select users dialog. Now we are going to select 3CT. We have the site URL, so I'm going to go for this site. And then on that site, I have a list called tasks that I want to target. Again, everything finished. You simply click finish, 
to let SharePoint Designer do all of the work of generating the files and then associating the workflow template with the issues list. So let's complete the visual how-to here and test out the new activity by creating a new issues item called this is an item not important enough. We press OK and then we are going to start the workflow and now we are selecting issues workflow number two. We start the workflow and then again as in the first case you have an additional column that specifies the status of the workflow. It has been completed. So this means that if I navigate to the task list on the other side over here, I can verify that I have an item here called another dummy task assigned to Tracy Tolman. So that concludes this visual how-to where I showed how to create a custom activity in visualstudio.net, deploy that activity, and made it available in SharePoint Designer as one of the new activities for your information workers when they start using the SharePoint Designer for creating custom workflows. I hope you enjoyed it and have fun with the other visual how-tos.